This is the guy she tells you not to worry about. And this is you. Obviously you're gonna lose that fight, so let's see what you can do to not lose that fight. Hello, my name is Adam Bokte, and in this video I'm going to show you how to properly fight as an Despletosaurus. Now, first of all, any and all future update may change the way you play as this creature, and my time with it are limited, so... Uh, one of your more experienced Aspletosaurus player might not agree with everything I say and if you find something disagreeable, comment it down below so I can ignore you. In this video, we'll be going over the Aspletosaurus arsenal, the subspecies you should choose to grow, its terrain compatibility and fighting style, and of course what type of fighting style you should try and go with depending on your opponent. We have two slots for head abilities, meaning we can have two attacks. We have four options, the first one being Piercing Bite, this is an attack for now unique to the Despletosaurus. It deals low damage, but it ignores any armor or weight of the target, meaning that no matter what you're up against, the damage output will be the same. Do pay in mind that it does have a bit of delay after you activate it, so you need to have good timing if you're gonna use this attack. And just like any math class, the cooldown is a bit long. The second ability is just the standard bite that causes medium damage. The third ability is a bone snap ability that deals bone break depending on how long it's held. Because the ability needs the charge up time, you do need to calculate when it's good to use this attack. Also, you will be a bit slower as you lose 15% running speed. My ex can confirm that gaping that wide requires efforts and stamina, so use this ability in moderation. However, unlike her, make sure you use teeth and that you snap it off. The bones, I mean. The fourth ability is a heavy bite that does strong but delayed damage output. Also, just like the normal bite, it doesn't use any stamina. The sensibility is an ability that increases your attack when you're close to a body. We have three options for hide. The first one being the resilient scales that increases your bleed and venom healing. The top scales increases your armor, and Slickai makes you immune to pouncers and grappers. The legs have three options, the first one being Long Distance Runner, that decreases your stamina drain. The second one being the Strong Leg, that makes you more knockback resistant and increases your bone break healing. The third option, Attraction, that increases your turning speed at the cost of stamina recovery. You have two options for Tail, the first one being the standard Tail attack, that also causes knockback. The second one, a Balanced Tail, that increases your turning radius. For now, you have one voice ability, that is Tyrant Raw, that increases your damage output and can be stacked, however this ability can only be used if you're in a group. This is the arsenal I recommend, of course you're going to be a bit confused when you're looking at head abilities and height abilities, I'll come back to that, but first, when it comes to leg abilities, I chose Long Distance Runner due to the fact that having more stamina, I just find it more suitable. I will later show you examples of why I believe this. When it comes to the Balanced Tail, the balance tail will help you in certain situations, especially if you try to go for a head-to-head -head fight. There are reasons to why I think that the normal tail attack aren't useful, but I'll come back to that later. As for head and hide abilities, it kinda depends on what you're fighting, so I can't really give a final say in that department. When it comes to what type of subspecies you should choose and grow, I say it goes between the balance and defense. The fighting style of the Despletosaurus depends on the opponent, and I kinda lean towards balance way more than I do defense to be honest. As for speed, the extra speed boost won't really help you too much in most situations, so I don't recommend speed uh, subspecies. When it comes to terrain, I say that open field works for Despletosaurus, but so does a lot of elevation, so elevation can also work in your favor. And unlike the Allosaurus, the Despletosaurus aren't the biggest in terms of size, among the mid tiers, I mean. I mean, he's not the biggest, but they are average. They got good personality. Meaning that crowded or denser areas can also work in the, the Despletosaurus' favor. It can actually help against bigger opponents. The objects can hindrance the opponent's movement, but it can also hinder your movement, so do watch out for that. Like I said, the fighting style of the Despletosaurus depends on what opponent you're facing. Meaning that if you try to do a head-to-head -head clash with an opponent with superior stats, well, that is a dumb idea and you deserve to lose that battle. In the fight against opponents with superior stats, it is best to do hits and run. Against opponents with inferior stats, then it's best to do a more defensive stand. 
against opponents that have somewhat similar stats to you, and it kinda depends on that opponent's speed and agility. As I just said, fighting a head-to-head -head battle with an opponent of superior stats... Dumb idea. Use your higher mobility to flank them and get in their blind spots. This can be more challenging if your opponents know how to properly move in place. If you should meet a, such an opponent, it would be better to back off. This player knows what he's doing, and an Apex wouldn't be an Apex if he couldn't take on other creatures one by one. If you do insist on staying in the fight, then this is not about the fight, this is about to prove something. The Desplitosaurus do work better in groups, so just pretend that these Sarkos are Desplitosaurus, and if you are in the herd, this strategy are pretty self-explanatory. You will find most creatures at equal stats to be rather easy to deal with. This is because when it comes to damage output, well, when it comes to raw damage, then the Desplitosaurus might be the best among the mid tiers. There are definitely contenders with the Desplitosaurus. However, when it comes to raw damage, then it's no secret that the Desplitosaurus are just a theoretic version of the mid tiers. It also has pretty decent stamina. Being able to keep up with the Pycnonomosaurus, one of the creatures with best stamina in the game, then as a Desplitosaurus opponent, if this Desplitosaurus want you dead and you try to flee, you will find it difficult to lose him. I'm not saying that Desplitosaurus are superior to the Pycnonomosaurus in terms of stamina, I'm just saying that he is capable of contending with it. The only thing that the Desplitosaurus really falls short on are health, and combat rate for that matter, but mostly health. The only other mid-tier that can give a Desplitosaurus a run for its money in terms of a head-to-head -head clash are actually the Allosaurus. Sure, the Allosaurus might not have as impressive damage output as the Desplitosaurus, but the Allosaurus has more HP. The Allosaurus vs Desplitosaurus are the only creature I say is a bit of 50-50 on who will win. But in the head-to-head -head clash with the other mid-tiers, I say the Desplitosaurus got it. When it comes to creature you obviously have any superior stats over, then of course, force them into a head-to-head -head battle. If you lose a head-to-head -head battle, no terrain bias, then the truth is, you just suck. Absolutely horrendous. Against Pouncers, all you really need to make them unable to really hurt you are just use the slick scales. I also forgot to mention this. To any other opponents besides Pouncers, you kinda only need the tough scouts. Against Pouncers, the moment you put slick scales on, they kinda lose their main way of hurting you. Of course, they can still hurt you if they are skilled enough or you're bad enough, but their main weapons are gone and all you need to do is just make sure that they can tailorize you properly. This is also why I say that having a balanced tail can be better. The tail attack doesn't do as much damage compared to your real weapons, so this is a good way to learn how to properly move in place. With their main way of hurting you gone, most panzers will see that this is just a wasteless effort. So to summarize, against creatures with superior stats, do hits and run. Try to use your superior mobility to get in their blind spots, and then over time, wear them down. Against creatures with similar stats, force them into a head-to-head -head battle. Focus on getting as many bites in as possible. Your superior damage output should grant you victory, at least most of the time. Against creatures with inferior stats, force them into a head-to-head -head battle and then proceed to absolutely destroy them. Against Pouncer, just equip the slick scales and just make sure they can't tail ride you. As a matter of fact, just stay in one place. Let them come to you and just let them run into your bites. They will sooner or later just give up as they see that this is a wasted effort. If you have any specific creature you want me to cover, go to my community post. There you will see how to suggest creature. And with that, I will see you guys later. Goodbye. Are you running?